by a combination of Africans and Arabs after he had played around with Christianity, disgraced it, brought on Islam, was pushed out of the Mediterranean. All right, during these years he is out of the Mediterranean, he was forced into what he called the middle of the dark ages. For 700 years now he's been in Europe feeding on Europeans. He has not enslaved the African principally because he has been enslaving Europeans under a form of slavery that he called feudalism. Strong Europeans have taken the land and enslaved other Europeans to work the land. The biggest landowner in Europe is the church. The church has endorsed feudalism and has supported the exploitation of the people under the guise of divine right of the church. And the church has calmed down the people, talking about the Catholic church, it's the only church they recognized at that time, that the people are going to get theirs in the hereafter. The people are, it, are so burdened with taxation and that the people are about to explode. Now, to get more funds to build the cathedrals and to support the top heavy ministry, the gold lace robes of the priests and the bishops, they are selling compensations to the people. Then, they have to look around for different ways to make money from the people. And so now they have something laying in wait they haven't exploited, something called pregatory. <laughs> and so they began to exploit the concept of pregatory. So, all right, Grandma died. The poor soul didn't get to heaven. She stopped in purgatory. <laughs> For so much money and so many prayers, we will pray her from purgatory into heaven. <laughs> so now you begin to fork out some money to get grandma <laughs> from purgatory into heaven. <laughs> That's another way of milking the people. So in the midst of this, they got a little, quite a bit of money that way. Then they begin to sell compensations and favors, and tassels. The more tassels you got, the closer you are to God. And the church figures begin to, you know, for, you're selling all kind of forgiven toys. And in the midst of all of this, the people began to grumble. They've got nothing left. The church is bleeding them dry. The people are about to explode against the church. Then something came, save the church, save the church in the nick of time. A beatnik religious wanderer, Peter the Hermit had gone to the Holy Land and discovered something. A puritanical Arab, a Persian, he said he was a Persian, so if he says he's a Persian, we never argue that point. Saladin had barred the Christian pilgrims from going to the Holy Land to see the Holy Grail in the holy places. He spread the news across Europe. 
How dare this infidel keep us from the holy places to see the ornamentations, the chalice, and all of the things that touched by our Lord, including the very shawl that he died in. He spread the news across Europe. We must go and rescue the Holy Grail. Wasn't lost anyway, but that be that as it were. So the Pope sees the idea. Now he can take the people's attention off of revolt. He needs an issue to take the people's mind from what the church has been doing to them. Now, you think because of your books that the crusade has something to do with holiness, something to do with religion. Well, I hate to disappoint you, but the crusade was a political thing to save the church from the wrath of the people. <laughs> now, you can read it your way, but as a classroom teacher, I got to read it the truthful way. The way they, the way the, all right. Now, Peter the Hunted, and the, with the Pope's endorsement, people began to gather for the first crusade. People began to march. And as they began to march to gather food, gather people to go across Europe, Rescue the Holy Grail, rescue the ornamentations from the infidels. People forgot their grievances. And as they began to march across Europe, they could take, go to a farm and not only take the farmer's product, take the farmer's daughter in the name of God. One of a woman over 10. Say, take the lady too. What an unviolated woman in root. They could do everything. Listen, in the name of God. Come on. In the name of God. Give it up. Just marched across, just taking everything in sight. All right, now, at first crusade, although Cecil B. DeMille has given you one crusade, <laughs> and made a fortune and died. <laughs> I know I'm giving you one that Cecil B. DeMille didn't give you in the movie. In the movie, they won. In real life, they got hell beat out of them. No. Richard the Lionhearted did not go on the first crusade. Of course, Cecil Mead Mill got him on the first crusade. In real life, he went on the second crusade. And in, in, in uh, Cecil Mead Mill's version, he was a Christian. In real life, he was an infant. In real life, he was, he, he didn't even belong to the Church of, he belonged to the Church of England superficially, but never went to church. Because he was, you know, the Church of England wasn't even crystallized at the time. He went through the motions. But in real life, the real reason for him going to the church, going on the crusades, that they had a, some foreign prince, princess for him to marry, who didn't attract him. She didn't have much behind or in front. <laughs> <laughs> both ways. <laughs> so um, he wanted to get out of that marriage. <laughs> I guess the best way for him to put some space between him and the lady, <laughs> he, he decided he wanted to go. <laughs> so he, I don't know what made him so lion-hearted, he couldn't stand up. <laughs> so he he got, got out of England to get out of that marriage. So he was going as long as he could. Um, and um, 